Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am here tonight with a new crochet series. I am going to show you how to make these blocks that look like log cabin quilt blocks. Huh? Pretty cool, huh? I have four designs that I came up with and this video will show you block number one. I think this is actually block number one and then I will have the other blocks coming up. The video tonight is kind of long because I try to explain as I go, you know, what we're doing, how to tie the ends and all that stuff. Um, this is very basic, just single crochet, but I will have linked down below and, and on the end screen and in the pinned comment, a uh, basic single crochet tutorial um, and even one more basic just showing you how to make a slip knot and a chain if that's where you need to start. I also show you just one way to take care of the ends that we have. Uh, normally I like to take care of my ends as I go. I like to crochet over them but I didn't do that for this tutorial. It was rough getting back to the swing of recording for crochet but I'm back with it and I hope to continue with it. I will still be doing quilt tops, sewing, and crochet. A lot of you ask me about knitting but I don't know how I would record that because I knit with one of the knitting needles under my arm and I have my both hands free and I would just need some kind of overhead camera mount which I don't have. If I can ever get that I would love to do knitting videos because I love to knit too. So just sit back and watch block number one. You might want a piece of paper so you can jot down how many stitches are in each section. So that might come in handy. I don't have any written instructions for this. I tried my hand at that and it was a lot of work. Too much for me to take on right now, but it's something I'm working on for future crochet videos. No promises. But, you know, have a piece of paper and jot down notes as you watch the video. And then when you attempt the first block, you just put the video on and pause at the end of each step so you can get caught up and that's the way it works. The videos for block number two, three, and four will be quick and then there will be a final video showing you how to put these blocks together. I'm only making 12. It's going to be a very small afghan for the sake of the tutorial, but you can make as many blocks as you want to make whatever size afghan you need. So just stick around and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Today we will be working on block one. This block starts with a piece that is 10 stitches across and 10 rows up and then we work around it. So I will be making one with you right now. I will be using the same pattern but different colors. I'm just using regular four ply yarn like Red Heart yarn. I'm actually just using scraps that I have and I'm using a size 10 and a half or K hook. I made my slip knot and I am going to chain 11. If you need a video on how to make the slip knot and the chain and single crochet, I have a video for that in the description box under this video. Now we are going to work 10 single crochet. So we go into our chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And we're just going to do that all the way across, chain one, and we're going to turn. Now we're going to go back with single crochet and we're going to do 10 rows. You're going to chain one and turn at the end of every row. So I'm just going to continue until I have 10 rows and then I will show you what that looks like. I completed my 10 rows and it's very easy to count rows with single crochet. Let me take my hook out. Each ridge is two rows and you can see the ridges really, really good. So there's two, four, six, eight, ten. And I know I'm right because we're going to have our beginning tail and our ending tail on opposite corners. So that lets us know that we have an even amount of rows here. Now we're going to be picking up another color and we're going to be crocheting on the side and that's again very easy with single crochet. Let I'm going to go ahead and use a cream color so there'll be a nice contrast for you. Now instead of doing a chain one with my purple 
and turning like we normally do, I'm going to chain one with the cream color. So I'm just going to pull that through. And we're not turning. We're not turning around and going back in this direction. We're keeping the right side facing. If you need to mark this, you can put a little pin or something so you know that this is the right side. The right side, when you're starting, your beginning tail is at the bottom right and your ending tail is at the top left. We're going to turn this. Now let's look first at these stitches. The easiest thing to see is what I call the bumps. There's a bump here, there's a bump here, here and here. Now remember, we just did 10 rows, so we want to pick up 10 stitches going across. So each ridge is going to get two stitches. That bump that I pointed out is a good one because it's pretty easy to see. The other thing that's pretty easy is what I call the bar. It doesn't really matter where you pick up your stitches as long as you keep it as evenly spaced as possible. So let's look here. It's kind of easy. Here is the bar. Here is the bump right here on the top. Here's the bar. Here's the bump. So if you go bar, bump, bar, bump, bar, bump all the way across, then you will have two stitches on each ridge. And one ridge is two rows. So it's a little bit hardest to see sometimes at the beginning, but I'm just going to go here and single crochet. Now I'm going to find my bump. It's right there. Single crochet. Here's my bar, single crochet, and my bump, single crochet. Two ridges, that's four rows, and I have four stitches. So we're good. We're going to keep going. Bar, bump. And sometimes the little bumps can be uh, tight, but you just deal with it. Well, here's my bar. And the last bump is this guy right here at the end. Whoops, right there. Okay, that's actually one row. But I'm calling this the pickup row. And it's not going to factor in when we continue. You'll see what I mean. But that is indeed one row. I'm calling it the pickup row. We're going to chain one and turn. Now we're going to work four rows, and we know we have ten across. I'm going to chain one and turn at the end of every row, and I will be back when I am done my additional four rows. And this is what we have. So you can see it's just like working log cabin style. We started this way, now we turned, we went this way, and now we're going to be working on this side. So let's look at what we have. We have this pickup row. That's really row number one. But we're not concerned with that one. Let's look at our ridges. We have one, two ridges. So we know we have four rows plus that pickup row. But we're concerned with the four rows that we completed after the pickup row. So when we turn, we want four stitches in the cream color. And then this piece, we know we have 10, so we're going to do 10 across. So we're going to pick up four here and 10 here, and that'll give us a total of 14 stitches. I just need another color. I'm going with this yellow, and this is actually a different kind of yarn. Is it three-ply? It might be four-ply. I think it's four-ply, but it's, it's finer, and that's okay. This is scrappy, so I'm going with it. All right, right here I am going to chain with my new color, and we're going to start working in that direction. So I want four stitches in the cream. I want two stitches per ridge. And there I go. I'm going into the bar. And the bump is right there. And there's my four stitches. Now don't worry about this leap here over to the purple. But do try to find your original 
chain. It can be hard because that was the foundation piece of this block. So you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the guy I want to go in right there. We're going to do 10 single crochet across. Chain 1 and turn. Now if you wanted to, you can knot your ends and weave as you go, but I think for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave the ends loose and then I'll show you how to tie and weave them in after. So we know we did 4 and 10, so that is 14 total, and we are going to work 6 rows in addition to this pickup row. So 6 more rows. So when we're done, we will have 3 nice ridges on the right side. And I will see you when we get there. Okay, so we just did 6 rows, so we're going to be picking up 6 stitches, 2 per ridge, and then... Here, we know we did 10 rows, and we can even count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So we're going to be picking up 10 stitches here. So that's a total of 16. So I'm going to use this blue. I'm going to chain one. Come on, right there. I don't know what that sound is outside. I don't know if you can hear that. It's weird. Something's being dragged across a road or something. Okay, here's my bar. And here's my bump. My bar. And my bump. I'm going to be calling these sections. So this is section one, section two, section three. And now we're working on section four. Now this yarn was a little bit thinner, so it's a little bit harder to get my hook under there. If you have a hard time, you know, putting your hook under the bump, you can always have a smaller hook available just to get in that bump and pull the yarn through. But you shouldn't really have any trouble. Okay, now that's my six. Now we have to do two, four, six, eight, ten. We have to do ten stitches. So I'm just going to go here as my bar. Very hard to crochet with a camera. I have a tripod and everything right here between me and my hands. <laughs> Two. Three. And there's a tough bump right there. Sometimes you can just pull it up with your fingers. Four. And there's my last bump. Chain one, turn. And for section four, we are going to be making only two rows, so two additional rows. And I'll meet you when we are done. I am done. We have two rows, which makes just like one ridge, plus that little pickup row down here. Now we're going to go this way. So we have two rows here, so we need to pick up two stitches here. This is the top of our original piece, which is 10 across. And then we have four rows here, because I can see two ridges, so two, four. So we're going to pick up four stitches there. And I'm going to take this green and do my chain. Okay, I'm going to just go under here for my first stitch and under my bump and there's two and that's all we need for there now we want ten across our starting color eight nine and ten and now we need to pick up four here now you can see, um, it depends on which edge you are on, like if it was the right edge or the left edge, because it's a little bit different. So you can see here, I have a choice of bars. There's one here in the front and there's one here in the back. When I have that option, I take the back one. So there's my bar, here's my bump, my bar, 
and my a bump. Chain one and turn. We're going to work six rows and there should be 10, 11, 12, 16 stitches in all. And I'll just see you when we're done. We just did this and now we are turning this way and we will be working on section number six. We have six rows here, we have 10 across, and we have six rows. So we will pick up six, 10, and six. And I'm going to use some maroon. I actually wanted to repeat this color or this color. I like to repeat in the same block, but I'm really down at the end of these scraps. So I don't have enough of either of those colors, I don't think to do the four rows that we are about to do. So I'm going with something that I know I have enough of. There's my chain. Now we want to pick up six, which is all about the bars and the bumps. And that bump is hidden a little bit. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to do 10 across. And I'm doing six. There's my bar. And my bump. I had to work at that one. Chain one and turn. And we are going to work four additional rows. Should have 22 stitches. And I will meet you at the end. You can just push pause, get your rows done, and then come back. My lighting, my natural lighting is changing. So, um, you know, if things look different, that's why. Okay, I just did my four rows. So we're ready to work on section seven. We're going to turn. We're going to want to pick up four stitches here, 14 stitches here, and then two stitches here. Let me get a color. All right, I went ahead and changed the settings. You know, it's funny. I have automatic settings on this camera, but it never changes automatically. <laughs> it seems like it should adjust as my natural lighting goes away. All right, there's my chain one, and I'm just using some red. And I'm going to go ahead off camera because it's getting hard to handle this with the camera in my way. So I am just going to do what we have been doing. I am going to pick up four stitches here because we have four rows. I will pick up 14 stitches here and then two stitches here. And then I'll see you at the end. Okay, I'm at the end. I did my chain one. We're going to turn and now it is 20 stitches across and we are only going to do two additional rows. So push pause, do your two rows and I'll see you when we are done. We are done section seven. We are turning this way now. We are going to be picking up two stitches here 16 stitches here and then six stitches here and I'm going with the yellow I'm going to repeat this yellow and I like it when I repeat that it's in different directions so this is going this way and then the yellow will go this way you do whatever you want I'm not concerned at all about you know the design of these blocks they're scrappy and uh, it all works Pick up two here. And then 16, and then six, and I'll see you when I'm at the end. And I will chain one and turn. Now we have 24 stitches to work on and we are going to complete two additional rows. So we will have one ridge on the right side and I'll see you when we are there. We just finished section eight. We are working on section nine, going this way. I'm going to use a light purple.
purple that I just grabbed. Ooh, I didn't even realize. I started with purple, so that'll be pretty there. Okay, we're going to do two stitches, 16 stitches, four stitches. That will be a total of 22 stitches. Crocheting this way is getting very frustrating. I have to have a better setup. Okay, I'm going to do two, 16, four, way over here, and you do the same. Starting with two. This soft yellow yarn, I have a hard time with the bumps. It's over. We did it. Now I will do 16 across, and then we have those four stitches at the end in that other color. Push pause, do the same, and we'll meet again when we're done. Right? I did my chain one. I'm going to turn. We should have 22 stitches across, and we want to do just two additional rows. I'll see you when we get there. We are done. Section number nine. On to section ten. We are going to be picking up two stitches, 22 stitches, then two stitches. I'm going with cream again. I know I need two stitches here. How do I know that? Because I have just two rows. How do I know it's two rows? Because it's just one ridge. 22 stitches here. How do I know that? I counted. <laughs> and how do you know for sure? Because you also counted. I bet you didn't. Okay, I'm going to work all of that and then I'll have two more stitches and I'll see you at the end. I picked up all 26 stitches. Chain one, turn, and we are doing, again, just two additional rows. And I'll see you when we are done. We just completed section 10, and now we are going to work on section 11. We need two stitches here because there's just two rows. Then we have 20 across, and then two at the end chain. I will pick up two stitches, 20 stitches, and then two stitches for a total of 24 stitches. And I'll see you at the end. And I will chain one and turn. Now I'll be working two additional rows and we have a total of 24 stitches. Hit pause, get your rows done, and we'll meet at the end. That's it for section 11. We are going on to section 12. We will be doing two stitches, 24 stitches, and then two more stitches for a total of 28 stitches. So I will get another color. I will pick up 28 stitches and I'll see you at the end here. I did my chain one. We are turning and we are going to complete six additional rows and as I said, you should have 28 stitches across. So push pause, do six more rows, and I'll meet you at the end. We're getting there. We only have two more sections to go and we will be done. We just worked on section number 12. We did six rows in addition to our pickup row. We are going to turn and we are going to pick up Six stitches, 22 stitches, and then two stitches for a total of 30. I will get a color and I'll meet you when I'm down here. I'm at the end, chained one. I will turn and now I will do an additional four rows and we have 30 stitches across and I'll see you when we're done. We just finished section 13. We did four rows in addition to our pickup row. It looks like this. We are turning and we are doing our last section, section 14, and we only need 
two rows and we are going to be picking up four stitches, 26 stitches, and then two stitches. And that will be a total of 32 stitches. I'll see you when we're here. I'm at the end. Chain one and turn. Now we're going to work just two additional rows on these 32 stitches. So exciting. We're almost done. Push pause, get your other two rows done, and I'll meet you at the end. And we are done, and all I do at the end is I just take my yarn and pull it through. So this is what we have. Now what the deal is, we end up with either 32 stitches or what would be 32 stitches on every edge. So don't worry if your block doesn't look square, if it looks a little bit more rectangular. Some of that is just an optical illusion because of the way we are going around and around. But you should have 32 stitches on each edge. Now this edge we just did, so we have 32 stitches. But now on this edge, we have 24 here that we can count. And then we have two here because we know this is just one ridge, so that's two rows. Then we have six here because we have three ridges, so we know we need six stitches here. So we know we have 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. Here we have 28 plus 4 is 32. Here we have 30 plus 2 is 32. So when we put these together, whether they look square or not, they're going to match up. Now I want to show you how you can get rid of all these pesky ends. There are many ways to handle this. You could have done it as you go. Uh, some people like to tie a knot and then just trim or a magic knot and trim. I'm telling you, I know people say, oh, the magic knot never comes apart. But if you don't do it exactly right, it comes apart. I like a good old fashioned knot. So I'm just taking two that are together and I'm going to tie a knot, like a square knot any kind of knot, like that. I usually do it with a crochet hook and that's when a smaller hook comes in handy. I just go under my stitches and pull that through. I just usually pick whatever looks like a good place and pull it through. And you just do that. Or you can take a big yarn needle and just, you know, thread the yarn needle and then push the needle through and you can do that. So you just do that to all your ends. Let me just get this one. I like to do it, you know, probably a couple of inches. So like that. And then I snip kind of close and you just tug a little bit and it it just finds its way home. <laughs> you could make as many blocks as you want like this. Oh, let's measure. This is approximately 12 inches square. That's a nice size block. Of course, if you use a different kind of yarn or a different size hook, or you crochet tighter than I do or more loose than I do, it's gonna vary, but you should still at least come out with something that is pretty much a square shape, and that's all you care about. Once you make one, you know what size your block is going to be, and then you can just figure out how many you need in total for your afghan. Now for this video, I am making just a tiny, tiny afghan. It'll be a lap afghan, or it could go to a small child. I'm only making 12 total. I have four different blocks that I will show you, and I'm making only three of each. So this is block number one. Block number two is the same, like log cabin style, but we're going to be starting with a different size center, so it makes the whole entire block a little bit different. So I do hope that you like this. I think it's super cool. I haven't put any of my blocks together yet.
I'll be doing that in the final episode. So do stay tuned for episode two. Make sure you subscribe. And if you're watching this in the future, well, then there will be a playlist down below in the description and in the pinned comment and most likely on the end screen. So you'll be able to uh, see the whole series and get caught up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with more soon. Bye.